You ever do that thing where you discover a new song and you are immediately so taken by it that you just gotta listen to it over and over and over again? And then you do that so much that you get sick of it pretty quickly? Well, uh, last night I discovered Sing Hallelujah by Dr. Alban, and it, oh, it amazed me. I loved it. I love cheesy 90s Euro dance. Uh, so, you know, Rhythm of the Night is the best song ever. Be My Lover, you know, Mr. Vane. Oh my god, I love that stuff. So, yeah, this was obviously incredible. So then today I was, you know, running around doing a bunch of Christmas shopping. Yeah, on December 22nd. Very smart, I agree. And so, right now I'm uh, kind of sick of that song because I was like, yeah, I'm just going to put it on loop. And at first it was pretty awesome because I couldn't get enough of it. But anyway... It still has some magic uh, there, don't worry. It's still got some power over me, which is just a testament to how insane it is. Anyway, uh, yeah, I have not made a video in a while for some reasons, but rather than go into those, you know, even when, even when I'm feeling down or, you know, upset about things, then I never lose my taste for drama. I thrive on it. And you can always count on Smogan to give you something incredibly dramatic and uh, usually stupid. You know, I'm not talking dramatic like, you know, people sorting out, you know, their relationship or something like that. I'm talking dramatic like comedy of errors uh, or, you know, human stupidity. That kind of thing. I keep wanting to make that video about how, um, Competitive Pokemon is good for you because it's a microcosm of the real world. And every time I see someone go, Oh, well, I don't want to believe that, you know, this person in a position of authority could be so incompetent. And it's like, yeah. Well, so this is a story about that. But it's also a story about the sociological aspect of smoking. It's not all funny. In fact, it actually starts out as part of the phenomenon I've observed for a while that stems from one of the nastier aspects of competitive Pokemon. So this is not entirely surprising given that a lot of the players drawn to competitive Pokemon are going to be people who you know need outlets for their frustration in real life. Nothing wrong with that but you know, the healthy version of that, of course, is, you know what, I'm going to pour all my frustration into this team, I'm going to make it so great, I'm going to play so well, I'm going to kick the daylights out of everyone, it's going to be great. That's the healthy version. Uh, the not-so-healthy version is people very, very cruelly mocking each other over competitive Pokemon. And, of course, if you know a thing one about competitive Pokemon, you know that it is not always the fairest game around. So you will see a lot of instances of someone playing an amazing game and then the game decides, you know what, you deserve to be fully paralyzed 16 times in a row. And then the other player wins and then the audience will use that as fuel to shit all over the player who got fully paralyzed 16 times. And it is cruel and and what's so cruel about it is not just that the player just lost some nonsense and, you know, can't really do anything about it, but that it's also very often incorrect, you know? And this goes the other way, too. Like, people, you know how many times I've seen someone uh, praise a player who just won a game, even though the player who won the game played badly just because it went their way? I don't, and it's the kind of thing where if you think about it, you cannot really understand how people can be so blind to it. And then, you know, I don't want to do a full sociological deep dive. The point of this uh, phenomenon being detailed for you here is the fact that many high-level tournament players, I can remember this going back like a decade or so, many high-level tournament players don't actually like playing the game. And I don't mean that they don't like the game of Pokemon. I mean that they don't actually like playing the game in tournaments you know, the the highest level, the, you know, big stage, all that stuff, you know, where they make their name for themselves and they show their stuff, okay, everyone knows they're great, and then they don't want to play them anymore once they have a reputation because they, I mean, there look, there's a lot of reasons why 
people might not want to play as much. But like a lot of it is, oh, I don't like the pressure of playing in front of people. You know, now that people you know expect things from me, and a lot of it, I think, comes from not having, not wanting to deal with the unbelievable nastiness of the idiots in the spectator in the um, in the audience of making stupid comments about not just tiers they know nothing about, but games they know nothing about. You know how many times I've seen people call things 50-50s when it's not even close? So, yeah. Uh, and you think, oh, we'll just ignore that. It's not that big a deal. And the thing is, yeah, well, a big part of the competitive Pokemon experience is the social aspect. That's kind of the problem. That's why a lot of us are drawn to the game in the first place. We enjoy that. And you know, playing the game with other people is, you know, a lot of what makes it as fun as it is. Not that the game itself isn't fun, but basically when so much of this stuff is wrapped up in the social experience, then you don't want to subject yourself to, you know, you don't want to subject yourself to the risk of looking bad in front of people uh, any more than you have to. You know, so this is why you wound up seeing a lot of things like uh, good players, you know, not playing unless they absolutely had to. You know, like in team tournaments, for example, they would always try to go last so they wouldn't go unless it mattered. Or unless they actually had to, they, they'd hope their team would win first. Or they would sub out, you know, a, a lot. And they would... Uh, yeah, all sorts of uh, stuff like that. They would, you know, oh, in individual tournaments, you would see this a lot. They would play the first couple rounds, which are more low key, and once they got to the more publicized later rounds, they would drop out. That happened all the time. And yeah, and on one hand, you can say, okay, that's kind of silly. And on the other hand, after you've seen enough spectators rip on someone for making a correct play and Pokemon being stupid. And then losing because of it, and then you know acting like it's their fault, then you know it kind of becomes more understandable. So, yeah, I mean this that happens still now, obviously. I mean just literally yesterday, or was it the day before? Whatever. Um, I saw a tournament final in which, you know, tale as old as time, a player made an objectively incorrect play, as in you know this play was any there was a clearly correct move, and this was not it. And then that player got bailed out by... I forget exactly how it happened. But uh, stuff like that. And then, then wound up winning the game. Largely because of getting bailed out despite making an objectively incorrect move. So, yeah. Uh, so, where does this come from? A lot of this comes... Uh, so this phenomenon, uh, I should say, is about people not wanting to play the game... Wanting to play the game as little as possible, right? Which is weird because the game you you think aren't we here to play the game? And if all you do is like play on ladder and you know against your friends for fun, then yes, it largely is. But as soon as you enter the tournament sphere, it becomes a more social thing. And the most embarrassing there's nothing embarrassing about playing competitive Pokemon. First of all, if anyone thinks that there really isn't, the most embarrassing thing about competitive Pokemon is not playing competitive Pokemon. The most embarrassing thing about competitive Pokemon is that the tournament sphere is very clicky to the point where your average high schooler would go, what is wrong with you? How are you behaving like this? Mostly because the people involved should have outgrown that kind of behavior. But, but then again, you say, well, some people never grow, outgrow that kind of behavior, and it's very present in the real world, and there you go. There's another life lesson for you from competitive Pokemon. Anyway, the reason I mentioned that hating playing the game thing so much is that that kind of culture started seeping into how we perceive players and the game and obviously you know what do you talk about with other players you know who are the best players things like that and so you would uh, see players not playing anything besides team tournaments and uh, you know no other big tournaments or anything like that and there are uh, achievements would by and large only be in these team tournaments which when you look at it are very small sample sizes you know SPL is nine weeks if you don't make the playoffs you know World Cup of Pokemon it can be as little as three games if you don't make the playoffs you know and such so players as records would be 
you know, based off of, you know, let's say a, a minimum of 12, ga 12 games per year. And yeah, they're like high stakes tournament games and whatever, but they're also best of one, and we'll get to that in a second. Uh, so, yeah, you, you would have uh, a lot of what's called the sheet, which is based on uh, official tournament games played. So, Smogun Premier League, World Cup of Pokemon, and now the Smogun Champions League, formerly the Snake Draft. You know, and uh, you would look at that. And that's a lot of... Whereas, you know, people used to put more emphasis on individual tournaments. Over time, people stopped, you know, putting the effort in the individual tournaments and focusing all on the team tournaments because those are the most fun. And the team tournaments, they are the social aspects of the tournament experience cranked up to the max. That's why everyone takes them so seriously, right? That's why they're so such a big deal? Okay, sure. But then, you know, you're getting judged off of these tournaments more than anything else. Uh, and the fact that, you know, some people only play these... And now the you know highest level of achievement are these tournament these best of one tournaments, which are which are a total of you know twelve to you know even if you went if your team went far in these tournaments you still wouldn't crack twenty games a year if you were just playing uh, SPL and World Cup because Snake Draft came around relatively later and even if you know once Snake came around then it was still you know under thirty games a year so. You know, this very small sample size was, you know, became the norm. And over time, you know, all these things mentioned uh, have led to the subject, uh, the real subject of today's video. And that is, uh, well, I also have to, I guess, preface it with best of one versus best of three. And I, I thought it was, like, extremely clear that... Best of three is a is an objectively superior competitive format. I thought that was as unquestioned as you got. However, in more recent years, you know, the, it, this is almost akin to arguing that the Earth is flat to me. Uh, so, and I, look, I love those conspiracy theories as much as the next guy, but you know, come on. So the. In recent years, you know, I've uh, and many other players, or some other players, have been advocating for best of three to be seen in team tournaments as well. Because individual tournaments, they're you know all best of three, and in team tournaments, they're all best of one. And several you know great players have complained about it being best of one and how stupid it is. And I mean, yes, in a game like Pokemon, yes, best of one is is you know, shockingly bad. And, you know, the argument that it's a team tournament, therefore it's actually a best of 10 or best of 12, I don't understand how you actually make that. Well, no, I do understand how I make this argument. That leads to the next point, where in the last couple of years, I think a lot of these arguments, I really find them difficult to take seriously. I don't think they're a matter of opinion. I have noticed a lot of arguments that are made less in favor of being more competitive because yes I, I realize theoretically best of infinity is the most competitive format but you know we have limitations but reasonably best of three is generally good right it works for the individual tournament should work for the team tournaments and then there are arguments back and forth some of the best of one arguments i can get behind most of them are really bad but th that's it's not even about that this video is not about best of one versus best of three it's more about because this kind of mindset I'm talking about also extends to like tiering where people will argue in favor of really stupid shit like uh, sand veil or something because they are in favor of variance you know they're in favor of cheese and it's basically directly anti-competitive and that is what I really take issue with because you know when you get into competitive Pokemon uh, then you think okay the whole point is to be competitive because otherwise there, that is as close to objectivity as we get. If there's no, if we don't have that, then it's just a complete clusterfuck shit show of, well, I prefer this. Oh, well, I prefer this. You know, and then you can't really claim that to be competitive at all, so you shouldn't even bother. But, you know, right now we are claiming to be competitive, but really making a bunch of arguments that take into account other stuff. And basically, a lot of these arguments shock me. Because they are very, they don't even hide it half the time. They say, you know, I want the game to be easier for me. 
And that I, I genuinely can't wrap my mind around this. And again, this is why Smogan and competitive Pokemon is good for you, because sometimes you will be met with people who will make arguments stunningly bad. And you say, how do you possibly... Not, not just how do you believe this, because I can understand people believe selfish things, even if they're wrong. But how do you not even dress it up? How do you just come right out and say, I want this, even though it's clearly fucking stupid? And, you know, it's almost a cosmic level of incomprehensibility. So, uh, where does that leave us with regards to this? Okay, so, the DPP people wanted the, to talk, hey, let's put best of three into SBL. Alright? Let's, uh, can we do that for our tier? You know, can we vote on it at least? You know, it, it should, it could be, maybe if we leave it up to the player base, because, you know, previously the proposal was, let's just make, you know, everything best of three. Oh, okay, maybe that's not good for newer generations. Okay, maybe let's just make older generations. Or, you know what, how about, since RBY is best of three, and everyone loves best of three in RBY, then why not just see, you know, if each tier wants to do it? And I'll link these threads in the pinned comment. But... Uh, you know, why not just let the player base decide? Because the DPP community does really like, or a good chunk of it does really like best of three. So, you know, you leave it to a vote and and see what happens. Okay, fine, whatever. Uh, and even if you don't, then it's still not as bad as what happens here. So, uh, yeah. I uh, Personally, I think a lot of the arguments have got about best of three are like, oh, it's, it's so much work, it's... You know, I've gone in circles about it so many times at this point, I really don't have the energy in me to go over it again. But the idea that, like, it's too difficult to make, you know, multiple good teams per week to use is... I don't understand how you can say, this is too hard for me, and have that be acceptable. How can you just say, oh, I'm not good enough for this to be the case? And then the tournament should accommodate that. How is that not the most backwards fucking thing? Anyway, not the point. Um, yeah, I, I find... Uh, okay, let, before I get too mad about people telling on themselves and then, you know, getting uh, affirmed for it. Anyway, so, this whole fucking argument, you know, came in. Um, God, these this fucking thread was embarrassing. Uh... I'm sorry to single out Finch here, but uh, he, the way he said, I find variance, while frustrating and less competitive at times, worth embracing rather than minimizing. And I, I, I really apologize to Finch for singling him out here, but this this was when he was still... Nowadays, he's, he's not part of the TD team, or he's not in charge of anything, so now I don't begrudge him a thing. But at the time when he posted this, I thought this was absolutely appalling. Um... The whole fucking point of not everyone prepares numerous good options this week. Then they should be punished for it. Then uh, that's the whole point. The better players are rewarded. It's a competitive si well, or so you think anyway. Yeah, uh, I you know what I hope this video does for people. You know, even if you don't aren't invested in this at all, I hope since the holiday period is so stressful for many people, myself included. I hope this lets you blow off some steam, whoever's listening. And again, Finch, I am very sorry. But I, I th also do not believe in letting such things just go unchallenged. I mean, good lord. Yeah, also, I don't... Th it does not take that much time to make multiple teams every week. From my own experience in SPL, the last several SPLs, I would build more teams per week regularly than I could use in the entire tournament. So... I don't know. I, I don't... Whenever someone says, oh, I can't build enough teams for this, I just straight up don't believe them. First of all, because I know how many teams they have on a regular basis. You know? And then the fact that they cannot... That they suddenly are so unfamiliar with their own tier that they can't do it. No, it's, it's laziness. It's I want it to be easier for me. And another reason for best of one as opposed to best of three, best of one makes it easier to knock off a player better than you because you have to only do it once as opposed to two out of three. Like, you know how many times, you know, a better player has lost the first game of a set and then come back and won the next two? I mean, it's... So it, these are, to me, these are arguments that make it better for the worst player, which... 
is against the point of a competitive tournament. Anyway, not the point. So then, best of one or best of three, people say, oh, it's uh, RBY. God, this post was fucking horrendous. I'm sorry. Uh, where do you get the illusion that it will minimize luck in matchups? It's not going to make them disappear. Obviously, stupid shit happens in Pokemon, even in best of fucking five. But it m makes it, it... It minimizes their impact relative to what it would be in best of one. I mean, Jesus Christ. So this is why it's, you know, stupefying stuff that you have to reconcile with. And then, you know, here's this post about RBY should be best of one and be like every other tier. So the reason RBY is best of three is because it is there's less choice to make in the team builder in terms of like EVs and items and stuff because you know EVs are maxed out and there are no items and you know the the Pokemon there are less Pokemon and there's less you know move options stuff like that. However, if you've ever seen an RBY player prepare before, it's uh, you know that it is not easy. It is not simple. It's not just oh I'll just load Starmie, Alakazam plus the big four you know twice. And then Zapdos in the third game. No, it's a lot more comprehensive than that. And that includes their moveset choices. And how they're going to play with them. Jesus Christ. So, and then, you know, the best of three thing came from the archaic idea that RBY is more RNG influenced than later generations. Which, by the way, just, just for anyone who thinks, oh, RBY, objectively, more crits, whatever. If you think RBY is more luck influenced than other generations, you are objectively wrong on the level of Flat Earthers. Like, this is so easily disproved, I promise, if you think that, you are only revealing that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So, I realize that was a, a kind of a sidebar of hostility, but I really dislike RBY hate from people who don't know what they're talking about, which is most people talking about RBY, so I just want to make that very clear, and I do want to make another video in the future about this subject in detail anyway so yeah uh big change yeah so and i guess spoiler alert this is exactly what happened people wanted uh best of one best of three for dpp and uh yeah and then what winds up happening is uh and people saying oh it's too much work it's god embarrassing uh, I and you know it's, it's so much more work to play best of three. It's like it really, really isn't. Anyway, so what winds up happening is this uh, spectacular fiasco, which I mean upsets me as someone with investment, but as someone who loves drama, I mean I'm uh, loving that. So yeah, uh, TD team best of one for all official uh, official team tournament matches. So that means RB instead of DPP getting the option to vote for best of three. Uh, the tournament directors now unanimously voted to make RBY best of one. Why? Desire for consistency between all format slots. So, yeah, it's I like it when it's pretty and uh, all the rules are symmetrical. That's the validity of that. So, colossally stupid, I agree. And uh, the only good thing about this is that the player base has come together to, you know, denigrate the tournament directors for one of the most spectacularly dumb decisions made ever. Which is no small feat given the rich history of idiocy that they have... Oh my god, this is... <laughs> yeah, so I will link these threads because uh, you can't really... You know, check them out in depth screen uh, with screen recordings, so you can uh, peruse them at your leisure. But yeah, uh, pretty much everyone despises them. Has there been a new post since? Re yeah, there's another new. Po oh, a minute ago. Yeah, it, so it's spectacular because the point of the tournament directors is ostensibly to serve the community, but now it's basically to put together the rules that they like and the reason, which is not necessarily a bad thing i don't mind the possibility of look guys we make the rules because these rules are good <coughs> excuse me i was just thinking about how fucking stupid this whole thing is <coughs> yeah i was sick for a few days it was not good uh and yeah so their logic for this rule change is not let's make the most competitive tournament possible it's we like rules being consistent 
and we don't like when, you know, some formats are best of three and some aren't. Like that isn't the dumbest fucking thing. Anyway, that's basically it. I should go make dinner, and that's it. So, <coughs> yeah. Uh, happy holidays. I hope this helped you get some uh, of your own frustrations out, whatever they may be, during this stressful time by listening to me swear about stupid shit happening. And uh, I will see you again very soon in the next one.